hasn't experienced hiccups? The origin of a hiccup is a muscle spasm in the diaphragm. This spasm sucks air rapidly and uncontrollably toward the lungs, slamming the unprepared epiglottis shut and producing the slight thunk we know of as a hiccup. There are myriad anecdotal methods for relieving hiccups. Breathing into a paper bag or drinking water from the opposite side of a cup are two such examples. Now, I use the physiological hiccup we all experience as a metaphor for the interpersonal collisions my clients frequently encounter on their teams. They're both dysfunctions. In the interactions between two people, hiccup stands for high-level interpersonal conversations causing unexpected problems. And they happen for just about the same reason. Only in the conversations, it's our knower judges that spasm, not our diaphragms. Your workmate suggests you should buy a new shirt before the big meeting, to which your knower judger analyzes as an insult, and your reply is something like, and you shouldn't wear sneakers to work every day, and the spasms are off and running with your competing shoulds doing battle. Our interpersonal hiccups are conversational spasms, even more annoying than real hiccups, often repeated over and over again, even if they temporarily subside, because our knower judger sets of rules don't match. My version of right and wrong isn't exactly what yours is, and at some point, that becomes important to both of us. So we get into it. Or I'm a high disk D or dominant, and you're a high C or compliant. Our methods of concluding a debate are totally different. My rule is I'm supposed to win at all costs, and yours is you're supposed to color between the lines at all costs, and your lines and my lines don't look anything alike. The good news is that interpersonal hiccups are even simpler to stop than physiological ones. I didn't say easier, I said simpler. To stop an interpersonal hiccup, you decide that the response you're about to utter is not worth the predictable outcome. Remember Viktor Frankl's between stimulus and response, there's a space, and in that space is our power to choose our response? This is one of those spaces. You can choose to change the spasm by disconnecting your knower judger, leaving your learner researcher to use such tools as suggesting you might be right, or I hadn't seen it that way, instead of defending your knower judger set of rules. It's my experience that saying or doing almost anything but what you would ordinarily say or do changes the tenor of the conversation forever. Using that logic, you could probably stop the conversational hiccup by breathing into a paper bag or drinking from the opposite side of a cup. Now think about it. How could the debate possibly continue? I'm Kim DeMott, corporate co-driver, and this is another moment of clarity. Mm -hmm.